Hey guys, how's it going? Impera Tempest here, and today I'm going to be doing a Deep Woken boss ladder. So this is basically a way to gauge where you're supposed to be in terms of how many bosses you're actually able to beat in Deep Woken. We'll just get straight into it, but I did want to give one disclaimer. I do think that some people are going to disagree with some of the picks on this list as being bosses, but I kind of included everything that sort of had its own special area on the map, and it's kind of a special mob that you fight, even if you can fight it at other places as well, like the Deep Widow. Starting off at the very bottom of the ladder, we have the rogue construct, which is basically just a regular golem, but he spawns in Minitirsa in the frozen lake. I wanted to include this because it is sort of a special mob that will always spawn here because there are other like rogue constructs that are frozen in the ice and stuff, but this is like the only one that's out of the ice, so I definitely considered it at least like a mini boss. And this one is definitely the lowest level of the ladder in terms of bosses you can beat because you're pretty much always going to want to cheese this one. The cheese is super easy to do, and you basically just have to dodge when he does the little blue attack. Super easy boss to kill, and really good rewards. If you're trying to farm some cool weapons or a high of Lord Tubers, for example, then you can go ahead and do that by just heading over to the Frozen Pond. But yeah, this is the bottom level, very easy boss to kill with the cheese. And one level up from that, we have the Deep Widow in the Hive. There's also a Deep Widow in the Depths, and again, this is one that I think a lot of people would probably consider more of a mini boss, but I did want to consider this for the list because it does have like its own special area. There's a bunch of webs and eggs and stuff like that, and I thought that was pretty indicative of like a boss arena, and so I wanted to include this as a boss. There's sort of a cheese you can do with this one, but you will take a lot more damage than with the Rogue Construct. Basically, you just have to head over to a campfire that is in the location in the video around there and then the Deep Widow won't be able to hit you and you can just heal up and then go fight it again. It has fairly low health compared to other bosses but it does still have pretty high health for a random mob and yeah the Deep Widow should be pretty easy to kill and again pretty good rewards so it's worth doing it and that is the second rung. And the next rung up is going to be Kaido with the cheese. This one is going to be if you find Kaido with an Ardor manifestation and instead of finding him in the Void Sea as a random spawn basically once you summon Kaido you just have to head over to the Boatman's Watch and once you head over there, you're going to be able to just kind of perch up and sit on top of one of the rocks, and Kaido will not be able to hit you with most of his attacks. He'll still be able to occasionally hit you, but since you can just put a campfire down right next to the spot, you'll be able to heal up any damage that you take. And this is going to be pretty much free as well. This one is a bit more dangerous because Kaido can kind of glitch out and hit you off and then kill you, so this one is definitely more dangerous than the first two. But with this cheese, it's pretty much a free Kaido kill and a free Ardor manifestation. Since this one is a boss though, I'm going to include fighting Kaido without this cheese, but I would definitely recommend doing this if you're just like a solo player or something because Kaido is really hard to kill solo. And that is the next rung. Next up, we have my favorite boss in the game, and this one is Ferryman. I love Ferryman personally. I think this boss is just so cool. The music is awesome. As long as you're not lagging, this fight is super fun to do. Now, Ferryman doesn't really have much of a cheese. There's like a couple weird things you can do with like standing outside of his arena, but for the most part, Ferryman is just going to be something you have to actually learn and you can't cheese him. However, I think Ferryman is really easy to do once you do learn him. He's hard if you don't know what any of his attacks do and he will kill you really early if you don't know how to dodge any of his attacks or when to swing on him and stuff like that. But once you start to learn him and you can figure out all the little openings you can do to sit down at the campfire and stuff like that, Ferryman becomes super super easy to kill. They also put Ferryman super far out into the void sea, so he's actually a really good way to safely farm bell progress without being interrupted by another player. And I do prefer to farm my bell progress on Ferryman on most of my characters because Solo Duke is actually still really hard, but definitely more of an entry-level boss and one that you can probably defeat after about six attempts and figuring out what all of his moves do. The next sort of boss is the Bone Keeper. This one actually does have multiple spawns in Layer 2, but the first one that you're going to find is on this snowy bridge, and I definitely do think it is sort of a special area for the Bone Keeper. Now again, this one is technically more of a mini boss. I'm sure a lot of people would consider this more of a mini boss, but I think that since you're locked into the arena, once you try to across the bridge and also because he has this like special bridge that he spawns on and a special like spawn animation I would consider the bone keeper a boss now I would say the bone keeper is harder than the ferryman mostly because you have to deal with other things on layer two and you have to make sure you don't fall off the bridge and stuff like that that is actually very easy to do when you're dodging around the bone keepers attacks also deal a ton of damage if the bone keeper grabs you you're basically going to get half your health bar deleted however once you learn the bone keeper and you find out that you can basically just dodge all of his attacks but at first bone keeper is going to pose quite 
a challenge to you if it's just your first time doing him. Still definitely lower on the bossing ladder overall, but definitely something that can start to pose a challenge. Next up we have the Enforcer, specifically the one you fight in the trial at the depths. Again, something people would argue on its boss status, but I definitely think the Enforcer is sort of the boss of the depths, even though it's not the hardest thing you can fight in the depth. At first the Enforcer will totally just wreck you. You will lose so many characters to this guy because he's the first actually intelligent boss that will faint you and stuff like that, but after you do the Enforcer and get him down, you'll be able to just kill him on basically any character infinitely and take like no damage from him. But once you learn about parrying and blocking his attacks, you basically just have a free exit from the depths. I would say that he's harder than Bonekeeper just because he poses so much of a risk to you and you basically have this constant like fear of wiping your character every time you're trying to do him and that nervousness definitely factors into it. Next up we have Duo Duke. This footage is actually from a Duke solo by Always AFK. Shout out to him. Great Deep Oaken channel. But actually this part of the list is the Duke Duo. Duoing Duke is actually really easy because you can kind of just have one person fighting him and while the other person heals up and then kind of just rotate in and out. This makes Duke super easy to do. He still will take a ton of damage and the boss definitely still has a chance of demolishing you. But as a duo, Duke is actually fairly easy and you should be able to complete him. The main thing about Duke is just that he has that big shield on him and once you get through that shield, Duke actually becomes super free. So yeah, if you want your first Duke clear, go grab a friend and try him out. But the Duke solo will be higher up on this list. So this next bot's actually going to be pretty weird and it's going to be Chaser. So the thing is, Chaser just recently got reworked and a lot of people are saying that Chaser is actually even harder than the Scion now, but then there's also some some people that still think Chaser is pretty free, but Chaser's mechanics at a core level are actually not that complicated to learn, and you can probably beat Chaser on your first try still. He definitely does pose a much bigger threat than he did before because you actually have to damage him and he has like a ton more health and stuff like that. And he takes a really, really long time to kill, but I'm sure they're going to go ahead and like rework him or rebalance him again in the future because a lot of people are having a lot of trouble with him now. Just destroying those healing blood jars and stuff like that, that's actually not that hard to do. His attacks are not that hard to avoid either. Mainly right now, the big problem is that he just has a ton of health and it's really hard to just ship him all the way down. You'll kind of run through all your light hook time trying to beat him because of his giant health pool now, but that's kind of where I would put him just based off mechanics. Not going to elaborate very much on this one because we already talked about it, but this is actually the slot that I would put Duke solo at because it is really, really hard to beat Duke when he has that shield up. Since he's using a fist type, it's very, very difficult to parry his attacks, and he's definitely harder than Chaser, in my opinion, based off of core mechanics, to do him solo. And this one I do think is actually a hot take. I think a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this one, but that's where I would put solo Duke. And in this slot, I'm going to go ahead and put Kaido without using the cheese method, so that means just basically fighting Kaido in a big group of people, or fighting Kaido solo solo even. I don't even know if Kaido is even possible to kill solo. You have to do so much damage to him and his ice beam just totally demolishes you. But yeah, if you're not cheesing Kaido, he is actually a pretty difficult boss. And again, I'm sure there's going to be people that are disagreeing with me on this one. I again think this is more of a hot take. Having to deal with all of Kaido's attacks is pretty scary, especially because you're going to mostly have to do it in the water. If he, if he lands one good ice beam on you, your character is basically dead. And the final slot of this list is obviously going to go to the Scion of Ethereon or Etheron or however you pronounce it. The Scion is definitely the hardest boss in the game at the current moment. In terms of mechanics, there's probably going to be one dude who wants to go down in the comments and be like, oh, you're just bad. You, you don't know how to beat Scion. You're, you're just bad at the game. Blah, 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 blah. If you mess up on Scion pretty much once, you're going to take a huge chunk of your health and damage. Even if you go in there with a subpar PvE build, you're going to be getting pieced up by him. He has some incredibly hard attacks to deal with, and he hits like a freight train. And having to move all around his arena and doing all the cycles is definitely something that can make the boss fight a lot more complicated. Complicated. But yeah, feel free to disagree and leave your comments below. I just ask that you remain civil because obviously I know a lot of Deep Ogan players aren't exactly the most civil fellows out there. But go ahead, start a discussion. This is just where I would rank the bosses in my own personal opinion based on the difficulty of the mechanics. And that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel for more great Deep Oaken content. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.